Um, so, well, hopefully the squads uh, resume. Hopefully they uh, let you guys back on court. Jeez. Yeah, well, I think we'll see what happens in the next. I mean, they've said no community sport for two weeks. Jeez. So I guess that's a that's a call that the government have to make with, with regarding tennis. So we'll see. But, but yeah, mate, I'll start out. Look, as an introduction um, with you, Mark. You know, thanks for joining us. Obviously, a really strange year for everyone. And, and um, you know, I know you've been in Adelaide. Uh, we've, we've helped you out with a little bit of gym equipment in your uh, hotel room there. But, um, you know, I guess this year has been a really strange year for you and, and, and found yourself in Adelaide for two weeks uh, with not much to do. Just tell us a little bit about that uh, and where you've come from and landed in Adelaide. Yeah, it's definitely been a bit of a unusual year so far. Um, you know, I've, I'm spending now my, you know, it's my 12th day now in quarantine. So, um, yeah, I've just been isolated in my room all, all this time. Um, and I've just, I've just recently come from, um, I was overseas for four months playing um, a lot of tournaments. So I was really happy I was back playing again. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was, I was able to play in my first, my first main draw at, at, at Roland Garros and uh, US Open. So, you know, I was very happy with how the trip went. Um, um, so, you know, there's a lot of tournaments and, uh, you know, I'm thankful that they were able to have these tournaments during this time. Um, but now, you know, I'm stuck in here, but I need two more days to go until I'm free again. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So I, I guess in some ways, 2020 for Mark Polman's, you. You got you really got to play three of the four majors this year, which is probably the first time in your career that's happened. Yeah, yeah, no, it has first first time in my career um, that I was able to play you know three other four main main draws as well. Um, so in a way, it's been a good year, but in a in another way, it's been a very strange year. And um, so hopefully next year we can play a full season. Um, but in saying that's been a great great uh, half a season for me this this year. Mm. Yeah, and, and as you said, winning that. Match at um at the French was you know I, I watched some of that pretty emotional for you to win in four especially against a, yeah. a Frenchman I'm sure you had the crowd against you right yeah no I was very uh, very pumped uh, to get the win um especially losing last one at qualifying was a bit of a bit of a tough one to take um so to bounce back and and get the get the chance to play in the in the main draw and and to get a win was even better um but uh, you know yeah the, the it was always gonna to be tough to beat a, a Frenchman in, in his home home a slam. So um, I was very happy with the result. Yeah. yeah, great. So yeah, so you've gone from the U.S. and then over to Europe, and then so I think did you fly in from Cologne? That was your last ATP event, which was main draw there. Yeah, so I played in um, I played in Cologne, correct? Um, and that was meant to be my last event of the season. Um, but then I also entered uh, Paris the 1000 and, and I got into qualifying there. So I went and played there as well. Um, and I had a, a close, yeah, seven, six in the third loss in the first round of qualifying. Um, but, uh, yeah, flew from Paris, um, back, back home here. Um, so, uh, that was my last event. Um, and, uh, it was cool to tick another Masters 1000 off that I had never played there before. Yeah, great. And so, I mean, you sit at about, I think it, last I looked was about 122 ATP. That's correct. Career yep, high, yep. Was your career high 116, right? Is that where your career high was? So yep. I take it your goal for the year was to really try and get yourself close to that top 100 benchmark. Yep. And you, you're just sitting just outside of that, which was uh, which is pretty awesome considering the year that we've had. Yeah, no, it's definitely my my long term goal um, is to try to break into that into that top one hundred. Um, so I just keep trying to stick at it and, and then keep trying to work towards it um, because you know it's definitely extremely tough. Um, and I'm slowly getting better and better each year. So hopefully next year will be the be the year I can try and make that transition. And I know, um, yeah, just watching you over the last few years on the outside, pretty pretty dedicated, very professional in, in everything you do. Just just tell us a little bit, I guess, in quarantine now where, you know, this time's been pretty unusual for you, but what's your daily routine like been 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 in there? Like, obviously, you sit to a routine. I mean, I know um, a few of the uh, lads that, uh, you know, are in the uh, squads 
the big yeah. Fortnite players as well. And I know that's sort of, uh, I hope you haven't been sitting on Fortnite <laughs> for 20 hours a day. Um, no, I haven't been. Um, um, I've definitely developed a little bit of a routine. Um, you know, it's been, you know, it's two weeks. So you kind of got to get, you got to figure out something that works, try to get the time to go by. Um, so yeah, I've been working on most mornings around eight, nine, trying to sleep as long as I can. <laughs> Um, but you know, I've got some, I've got some weights here. So I've been doing a workout every day in the afternoon, usually, um, I've got my skipping rope here. So I've been, you know, able to pass by an hour and a half each day of that. Um, and just trying to keep my body in somewhat, um, decent condition because once I get out of here, I'll be in stuck into preseason. Um, so I think my body is, is feeling good and I'm definitely well recovered now. Um, so when I, when I get out of here, I'm going to get stuck into a uh, preseason very, very well. Hmm. And what does that look like? So back to Melbourne, um, and I know they've just restarted the uh, UTR match play pro series. W- would you try and get into that a little bit? Because I know it's uh, a surprise. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I will play in any of those. Um, um, just, just mainly because I've had a lot of tournaments over the last few months. Um, and I feel always during December, I really like to, quite to have a good you know few weeks of training and, and really prepare my body well um i feel last year i had a very good off season and allowed me to have a good aussie summer so that's going to be the plan um when i get back is you know train in melbourne for a couple of weeks and um you know tournament start in the beginning of january so um it's going to be a lot of tennis in melbourne um so i've got to get ready for that yeah and yeah just talk a little bit about i guess the training i mean i've i've seen i've had some great sessions with alex and you know, late and you've had a fair bit of time with Luch on the road and just, I guess, that that watching that level of commitment, I think now as well, there's, there's a good group of you guys, um, you know, that have sort of started to push one another along. I mean, Ducks has is, 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 is had a great sort of season and you've yeah. got Balti and obviously uh, Millman's doing really well. Like, just talk a little bit about all those guys, I guess, traveling a little bit with them and and I guess having that training because they're, they're all, as you know, really committed to the sport and, and work really hard. Yeah, I think it's great. There's a, you know, there's a bunch of us now slowly coming through that are also outside the top 100. Um, and, and like you said, Ducks had a great season as well. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just great to see the other Aussie boys doing well. Um, you know, it gives us other guys motivation that we can, you know, keep trying to sh- stride for for higher, um, you know, try to get our rankings where they are. Um, but, you know, also like Bolte and, and Chris O'Connell and Popperin and, and all these guys outside top 100 are also making great strides. So I think it's great. Um, and hopefully we can get more Aussies in the top 100. I think that's got to be our, that's our goal. Yeah, yeah and v- Vukic as well. Vukic, yeah, Vukic, sorry, He's had yep. Good grind, good story. And, and maybe talk a little bit about that. Um, I know back in the day with the National Academy and you, you coming up through the Victorian ranks, like what was that, what was that like for you training wise in Victoria with the NA and how much of that did you, did you go into Melbourne park and, and utilize all those guys that were around? But then also, um, you know, it, I know you've sort of turned pro. What was it? 2018. Yeah. That right. Yeah. I think that's correct. Yes. So you're sort of 18 coming out of high school, like, and, and looking at it, okay, well, you know, that's where we've got some kids in the program where it's like, well, what's the best option? Do I turn pro, you know, someone like a Vukic now you look at him and I know he, he took the college pathway and played over there and, and, and it's a long journey, isn't it? I mean, you're 23 now and it's, yep. you've been out there grinding away at it and, and finally starting to get a few rewards. But tell us when, when you were sort of looking back at that time as a junior, you know, what were you playing junior wise? Um, did you play any rep, you know, talk about a little bit of your rep representation, you know, with, whether it was Junior Davis Cup and, and just that journey, what you remember from it and, and making the decision to, you know, go out and try and play pro circuit tennis? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, in my junior days, I think, um, you know, I had a lot of good experiences. I played a lot of the junior slams, um, which I think really helps for now around when you, when you get a bit older. Um, and also, you know, playing Junior Davis Cup, having that sort of pressure of playing for your country, I think is also a great sort of experience when I was younger. Um, and, uh, you know, when I was, when I was my last year of, of uh, juniors, um, you know, it wasn't easy. 
because I knew the next year, you know, that this is where you're playing in, in the pros and you go start from the futures. And it's very tough to, you know, transition through that. I think it took me two years or so to get through the futures and, and finally into the challenges. Um, but, um, you know, it's, you know, it's been, it's been a tough to get to where I am now. I've been grinding the challenges circuit for a couple of years now as well. Um, so I'm thankful that I'm slowly getting through it and, and, and playing more tour events now. Um, but I, I think it's, you know, it's all, all, all help through the juniors playing the grand slams. Um, but also playing, playing the college circuit is now also proving to be a great, great way to get through to the pros. So I think either way, whichever one works well for you. Um, and I see a lot of Aussie boys taking the, um, the college route now, which is also great. I think it's a different way. And, um, you know, I think either way can work. Yeah. No, it is. I think, um, as we've seen, talk to the kids a lot about it, is it's a long journey, isn't it? Um, it you know, is. It's, it's all of a sudden come out of, we, we occasionally see someone like, I guess, Nick that comes out pretty quick and yeah. always been fortunate. And it's, but realistically, there's a bit more work into it than um, having that, that quick, I guess. Uh, yeah, that quick move. jump. Yeah. yeah, jump out of the juniors, but um, and and any thoughts? I guess not sure if you've heard too much about. I guess the new the new pathway, you know, with our, with the national development squads in each state and and um, the national tennis academy up in uh, Queensland. What what that looks like, and for you guys as pros and and also with juniors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a bit tricky because uh, I've been training in Melbourne all my all my um, you know most through my teenage years um so i'm going to keep my base in melbourne and, and keep training there but a lot of good players are also now moving to brisbane to, to practice as that's the main center now um so it's a bit bit of a tricky one but i'm, I'm thankful i'm still in melbourne there's a lot of guys for me to hit with you know um so i'm going to i'm going to stay down there for, for the time being um but uh you know brisbane's a great facility and the weather's unreal so i think it's a good move that the the main base is there yeah and any, mate, any advice, I guess, in, the, in this time, you know, we talk about goal setting and you would have had some goals for the year. We spoke about maybe trying to sneak inside the top 100 and, uh, you know, the rest of your goals for the year. Obviously, you said you're fit now and looking to get back into training and what next year looks like. But any advice for our kids? I mean, it's been a tough year. We're you know, pretty isolated not getting to play a lot of tournaments here uh, and it doesn't look like we're going to get any of that um, anytime soon, but any advice that you could give some of the younger, you know, uh, boys and girls in, in these programs across the country? Yeah, I think it's been a, a very um, tough time for the younger players. You know, they've been, you know, if you're a pro, at least you can still try to play some of the, some big events, but for the junior guys, it's been not much. Um, but I think my biggest tip for the younger guys um, will just be trying to really improve their game and and work on their weaknesses. I think that's where they can make the biggest improvements. And I know when I was a younger player, um, you know, I didn't really have much power. I was more of a defensive and a, and a crafty sort of player. Um, and I just try to work on my on my power game and, and look, looking for ways to take time away from my opponent. And I found that helped me. Um, so I think the younger guys need to, to try to see where they need to improve um, and keep developing their game because if they want to become a, a pro one day, you know, they need to develop all the little areas like their fitness and their strength and their and their um, mental strength so i think tennis is a it's like a long journey like you said so i think um just one one day at a time <laughs> yeah that's right well mate i uh, really appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us here in adelaide of all places um <laughs> probably uh I, I bet we would have loved you to get you out on court a little bit but um yeah. you know hopefully with the um uh, international uh, over the next 10 years in our state we'll um we'll get to see mark Pullman's playing playing in the main draw over the next uh 10 years so really appreciate your time good luck you know with the the last two days here and with your preseason. and we look we look forward to hopefully uh seeing you play at the start of the year so thanks for um having a chat no no worries thanks for having me Sandy. thank you I'll just um, 